Hi, my name's Peter Kaufman, and the U.S. media is coming apart at the seams. Or so says Jacobin Magazine. U.S. media is collapsing. Here's how to save it. Ah, yes, Jacobin, whom we should be looking to for guidance as to how to get more interest over time. If you aren't familiar with Jacobin, they're a quote-unquote leading voice on the American left, offering socialist perspectives on politics, economics, and culture. The print magazine is released quarterly and reaches 75,000 subscribers, in addition to a web audience of over 3 million a month. Or maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of 81.8 thousand people. One of the two. Long story short, this article bemoans the difficulties that media is facing. Indeed, it does do one thing that you typically do not see when people complain about the sustainability of a media business model. They point out that capitalist media is destined to fail. To illustrate that point, they went to a University of Pennsylvania media scholar named Victor Pickard, who told them that capitalism and journalism was always a match made in hell. We need to accept that the problems we're seeing now are inherent to market-driven media. Wow, that sounds great. Like, in all seriousness, it's pretty similar to stuff that I've said for a long time, isn't it? And so you, the viewer, says to yourself, Peter, person on the screen, what the fuck is your beef with Jacobin? Well, let's talk solutions. The author, and by proxy Jacobin itself, suggests three solutions. The first, it puts into the category of near-term policy reform, immediate aid, finding ways to support struggling journalists and smaller media outfits through either grants or mutual aid networks. Uh, that sounds a lot like uh, subscriptions, which um, that's kind of existed for a while. Allegedly, you guys, Jacobin, you, you got 75,000 of those. Is that a mutual aid network? To be fair, they do go beyond that and say we should consider returning to the Works Progress Administration model, but that's real near-term shit. That's not systemic reform. That doesn't address the relationship between worker and means. Certainly not. And that's what systemic change is when you address that relationship. In fact, if the worker were to own the means, that would change the interests of publication significantly, would it not? And so you would think that when they start talking about long-term things, they would advocate towards a change in the relationship of means of production. Especially given how quote-unquote leftist they are. And you know the left. That's what the left is, right? That's what the left is for, right? It's not an ideology of progress that sprung forward when the bourgeoisie, the capitalists, were the progressive force and continued that way regardless of the fact that no material change presented itself. A physical manifestation of support for the bourgeoisie uh, with representatives sitting on one side of a room, the National Assembly... It's not like that or anything. No, what they actually end up advocating for, an independent public media system. Public meaning that we fund it through taxes. And independent meaning it's not just a government mouthpiece. Now, in order to outline what exactly that means, they reference an article written in 2020 called We Need a Media System That Serves People's Needs, Not Corporations, which calls for a shift towards a publicly funded media system and again points towards things like the Works Progress Administration, which was referenced earlier. So if I may, what Jacobin message is that the distinction between private and state media in a neoliberal, imperial capitalist world is not that meaningful. Private media, which works according to market incentive, uh, primarily works in the interests of those who own it, which are, by definition, capitalists. The USA is a capitalist state. The state is a dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. The ruling class is the capitalists, and the state is run in the interests of the ruling class. I know there's plenty of people who love to argue how a great democracy is and how that works just fine, as straightforward and as it's supposed to, but, but I don't think it does. I think... Uh, uh, it's a dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. I think it's pretty obvious to basically anybody. It's a, they don't necessarily look at it that way. They look at it like the elites or the richest among us, usually 
something quantitative as opposed to qualitative, like ownership. But people know that Biden and Trump are both out for certain factions of the big guys. I think that argument stands just fine, except it's qualitative rather than quantitative. That's it. Yeah, the elites run everything. Duh. But being that owning is what creates interests and ultimately what dictates market incentives, then media outlets and organizations operating within a market, as per those incentives and rewards, are serving the same purpose as state media would. The interests of the ruling class, the capitalists. Private media is de facto state media in a capitalist society. It's that simple. Publicly funding it might seem like a big improvement until you start thinking about whose interest the state actually serves, which is the same people. So that's a big problem. But again, another problem that we're talking about here is the fact that no matter how much money you throw at independent journalists, uh, there's always people with more money. So let's say you make it so that informational and or news media, whatever you want to call it, is suddenly uh, under the purview of public funding and only as such. Do you know what isn't affected uh, from that point forward? Stuff like The Daily Show or Last Week Tonight, those are technically not news programs. They are entertainment programs. And, and how do I put this? Um, as far as news already is that, like that's basically what news already is, all they kind of really have to do to retain their ability to seed a narrative over the facts. I mean, it's impossible not to narrativize to at least some extent, but to prioritize that over facts. All they got to say is we aren't news, we're entertainment. Now, they're basically making entertainment anyway. Uh, that's also propaganda, but they just got to say it. Yes, we're informing the public, but this is primarily an entertainment program. Done. If it doesn't stop there, we start getting into some pretty serious implications about the First Amendment. And then all of these publicly funded independent journalists and small organizations are competing with entertainment conglomerates, which are, by the way, going to be designed to be more entertaining than what would no doubt turn into a PBS-like enterprise, assuming somehow this could work. Which, spoiler, it can't. This is all just utopian Robert Owen hypothetical model crap that people are laying out. Yes, there is a, a law in California that puts forward some of these principles, but I'd argue that if that gets passed, it will likely create some kind of a disaster because it's not even like across the board. It's just California. And, and one of the propositions in here is so like nerdy technical liberal bullshit it's oh every citizen would get a 200 dollars subsidy which they get to mark on their taxes as to where it goes in terms of local media as to fund something independent thus uh better automatically okay fine let's say you do that you know what that creates a situation where the incentive is pandering as hard as possible to the personal tastes of anybody that they can get to mark, send my money there on their taxes. And that creates the exact same incentive that the entertainment business, the Fox News business model creates. It's literally just pandering to demographics. It's just doing it through not the market? Maybe somebody might argue that there's less outside influence, but I bet you they'd figure out a way to have outside influence. Um, this is stupid. If you're going to criticize the interests of the media, uh, it's much more simple. I did a documentary a few years ago called Free Speech Extreme. Um, besides wagging my dick around, a large aspect of that documentary is about how we're using the wrong definition when we talk about free speech. It's not a matter of the philosophical idea of whether or not you're coerced into doing things. It's that you have to pay to have speech that people hear in a capitalist society. A platform costs money. Why? Because of the capitalist mode of ownership of the means of production. That's the ground floor of media critique in capitalism. You start there and you continue. Yes, they do acknowledge that capitalism and journalism 
has always been a match made in hell, that capitalism creates incentives and rewards. But you know what? This article really doesn't talk about why. And Jacobin is always like that. Jacobin will always say, capitalism bad, and then they will propose some solution that is techno-liberal bullshit. Euro-socialism, the Nordic model, whatever you want to fucking call it. They will not address ownership. Government subsidies does not address ownership. It does not address the actual problem. And just to be clear, that problem is not going to be addressed until uh, the people have power. Everybody always asks, well, how do you solve that? Well, you don't. Not in capitalism. If it's capitalism, you don't solve it. It's that simple. What you do is you start building relationships around discussions about the conflicts of interests that are generated from the different modes of ownership and go from there. History is class conflict. Class conflict is history. Things change when the conflict of interest is the central tension that is being addressed. I have never seen Jacobin operate explicitly from that viewpoint. Not once. And I think that's all I got for you today. Make sure to lick the video, slurp all over them buttons, uh, become a subscriber, leave me a comment, and uh, money me. Go to patreon.com slash petercoffin and money me. Or just, you know, buy one of my books or watch my documentaries. I don't care. It would make me happy either way. Uh, you kind of money me either way. I hope you have a good day. See you later. Bye-bye.